Honda guys, Justin Fuller, ex Honda salesman for nearly a decade. And today, I'm gonna to be showing you some tips and tricks on the 2024 Honda Pilots. So you don't own this thing for a year or two, only to go, damn, I didn't even know it could do that. So let's hop on in. super trick I'm gonna show you is related to the key fob, right? So if the car is locked, right? And I wanna roll down the windows because it's nice outside. Now today the sun's out, but it's pretty darn cold and the wind's blowing. I can press it once, press and hold, and if I hold, what it'll do is it'll roll the windows down. And if you have a moonroof, which this one doesn't, it'll roll that down as well. Now being able to roll the windows down is a pretty cool feature, right? If you live somewhere hot, but what if you live somewhere where it rains a lot? What if you happen to be laying on the couch and you accidentally roll the windows down in the middle of a storm? Well, that kind of sucks, but you can actually disengage this feature, right? You can turn it off. Let me show you how to do that. So to get to that feature, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna come over here and go into vehicle settings. Now, once you're under vehicle settings, you wanna go to door and window setup. Now, if you scroll to the very bottom of the screen, door and window setup, you're gonna see remote window controls. From here, you can scroll down, you can go ahead and turn that feature off, and now you don't have to worry about accidentally rolling the windows down and flooding your car if it rains. All right, guys, so at this point, I think we all generally have an understanding for what smart key entry is. If I have the key inside of my pocket, I walk up and I touch my door handle, it'll unlock this door. But it isn't set up to unlock my other doors, right? but you can change that. So in the middle of a storm, you don't have to run out of the car and then everybody else is yanking on the doors and they're angry because you haven't let them in. Well, let me show you how to set up to where when you touch this, all the doors unlock. So to change that feature, what we're gonna do is we're gonna come all across and go into vehicle settings. Now, once you're into vehicle settings, you wanna go to keyless access setup. Now under keyless access setup, it's gonna be this very first one, door unlock mode. So if I jump in here right now, it's set to driver's door. I can then change that to all doors. So this way, when I touch the door handle, it'll unlock all of the doors of the vehicle so all of us can get in quickly. So this next feature is actually really important to me. I travel around with a lot of things, cameras, you know, laptops, all the things for different jobs that I'm doing. But when I get out of the car, I go ahead and shut the door and I start to walk in. Maybe I'm going into the grocery store, maybe I'm heading into work. And then usually I get into the store and go, oh my God, I don't know if I actually locked the doors. So then what do I have to do? I have to walk all the way back until I get close enough to make sure that I can hit the lock to make sure it locked. But what if I told you could set up to where when you get 10 feet from the car, if you have the key with you, it'll automatically lock the doors. Once again, we are gonna get jump into vehicle settings. Now, once you're under vehicle settings, you wanna go to door and window setup. Now under door and window setup, you wanna go to walk away auto lock. The default is for this feature to always be turned off in the vehicle. I don't know why, I would just make it on. It makes so much sense for a lot of people. If you turn this feature on now, when you get out of the car, if you have the key with you and you get 10 feet from the car, it'll automatically lock the doors for you. So here's a cool trick related to the second row of this vehicle. So did you know that if you pull this down and reach underneath here, there's a little wire you can pull. And if you pull that wire and you lift up, this actually will pop out. You can then remove this piece, which it's not like guys. Once you have this piece removed, it'll actually fit back here. And in the EXL, they've actually made this a little bit deeper well. So I can pull this guy, be able to put this back on, and keep it completely tucked away. All right, so this tip or trick is gonna be for my sports fans. Now, if you have Sirius XM, this is gonna to apply to you. If not, jump to the next one, right? But we're gonna jump in here. What I'm gonna do is show you how to set up to where you can get notifications on game and even scoring alerts. So when you get to Sirius XM, you're gonna open it up and then you're gonna jump into settings. Now, once you're under settings, you wanna to go to sports notification setup. Now, the first thing you wanna do is go select your teams, right? So I would jump in here and then go find my teams. So this is specifically for this, I'm gonna use the Dallas Cowboys because I'm from Texas, right? Now, once I've selected my team or teams, I would jump back and then I wanna to go to notifications. At that point, I then wanna to go to game notifications because I can turn that on, right? And I've turned it on for both here and I can jump back and go to sports flash game, right? So I wanna know if something's happening in that game and I can then select it. Now I can't select it for basketball because that'd be obnoxious. You'd get alerts like every five seconds, but football makes a little bit more sense. Now, once I've set that up, I will get those notifications. One, if the game's on and then two, if they are scoring. All right, so let's talk about Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. I wanna show you some, some ways to customize and some tips and tricks that are gonna work for this in your vehicle, right? So the first thing I wanna show you is just the general understanding of, hey, I've got my map set up and then I've got my audio and whatever is going on on the other side. Understand that you can arrange this, right? If you wanna do so, all you gotta do is come in here and jump down to settings, right? When I get to settings, I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna scroll way down and then you're gonna see change layout. When you get to the layout, you can put the media closer to the driver if that's what you prefer, so that when you jump back, now I've got my media here and I've got my map across the way. So understand that you can do that. Now, the second part to this is when I jump in here. There's a couple things that I wanna go over. One, you can change this background back here, right? If you want a different background, it's easy enough. All you gotta do is go to settings. And then once you're under settings, let me jump back out of this and scroll up near the top here. 
here. Uh, and you can go to wallpaper. They've already got a bunch of different wallpapers you can pick from. Select the one you want, boom, we're good to go. And now when I jump back to that, I'll have that wallpaper up. Now, the next step, or, or I should say, trick I wanna show you is a couple of them, right? First off is I've added in these, these real quick shortcuts, right? It, take me to the nearest Starbucks or take me to the nearest gas station, right? So I just touch it, it fills in the prompt for me, and then it'll start directing me to that, right? So super helpful uh, for things that you may need to visit a lot, or if you just need to find something, nearest Costco, near whatever the item may be, right? So super helpful that you can do that. The other part to that is you can set up a custom action where it'll call someone or do something for you, right? So that's what I've got here, actions and contacts, right? So I wanna show you how to set that up. So what you're gonna do is scroll down to the very bottom and you wanna go to customize. Now, when you go to customize, it's gonna launch right my app for me now on your app up here you can see add a shortcut right and then it's going to prompt me do i want to call a contact or add an assistant action now if i want to call a contact i simply go there and then i find the person that i want to add and i add them right easy enough to do the second part to that is if i want to add an assistant action if i want to add an action i'm going to type the command that i want so it could be like you know directions to you know nearest you know honda dealership whatever the case may be and then i'm going to label it right the second part i would label it once i've done that create shortcut or i can test it to make sure it works create shortcut it'll then drop it in right so that's how i've added it now it'll typically add it and it'll be at the very bottom here and then i would have to go find it but while we're here i want to show you while i'm looking at this screen i may not want this order that I have going on right here, right? I might wanna move Spotify up here and then move my maps over and up to the top and move some stuff around. Understand that you can do that. When you're on your app, if I come in here and say, okay, well, I wanna grab my maps, right? And I wanna move the maps uh, up higher, right? So I want maps up here. Uh, Spotify, I wanna move Starbucks down here because I don't use that one that often. Uh, and then I wanna have maybe, you know, my messages, I wanna move those up here as well, right? So I've gone ahead and rearranged this. Now, for that to take place, I'm gonna have to unplug, right? I'm gonna have to kill my uh, Apple CarPlay Android Auto and then plug it back in. Once I plug it back in and everything loads back up, it'll then rearrange that for me. So now when I come in here, I jump in, it has now changed the order of those apps that I've placed. So now, you know, you can set up custom actions to, you know, give you directions or do something specific for you. This is the example I've, I've set up or to set up to call someone. So if you talk to somebody regularly, I've set up my Google phone number, which is always in my descriptions. If you ever want to ask me a question, you can shoot me a text or give me a call. Know that that's there, but that's how you can do this. So just some different things that you can do with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto to customize and change things around. Now, if you're saying to yourself, hey, that's cool, Justin, but is there a way for me to get like Netflix or Amazon Prime or Kodi or any of those other apps to work on here? Well, you can't necessarily do it with just Apple CarPlay Android Auto, but I do have a way to do that. Let me show you. Now you may notice that my display looks considerably different and I've got a lot of apps that you might not be able to take advantage of if you're using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto. Things like being able to use Google and run a search or pulling up Netflix, right? Maybe I wanna be able to jump into some of my email stuff or pull up Teams or all these different things that I wanna take advantage of, you can. Well, how am I doing that? Let me explain. This is the CPC 200 T-Box, right? So I'll throw up uh, the, the website on the screen. So what this is, is it's basically a system that's set up to turn your touchscreen into uh, essentially a tablet, right? Where you can jump in here, I can go, cool, I want a certain app. Okay, let me jump into the Play Store, go find the app that I want and be able to download it and use it. So this gives you kind of the full unlocked version of the head unit, right? Because what I run into is when I'm, you know, using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, I can't use certain apps that I want. And then when I do jump into certain apps that I use regularly, things like Spotify, I find that it's limited, right? They're gonna force me to use voice command to run a search to find something, which can be a pain sometimes when you're trying to search it and it just won't hear what you're saying. Or when I jump into a specific artist, I can't see everything that I wanna see, right? And maybe I don't know the name of the song. So just show me the most popular songs by the guy. Or maybe I'm like, I don't know, it was on one of the albums. Let me see the albums, right? This gives you that full version of apps, right? So this way it's like you're using your desktop uh, computer or your laptop to pull up and, and, and use it, right? So it doesn't limit things, right? I can jump into the search and I can just type in a search, right? I don't have to use the voice command. You still can, but I don't have to. So I really like that about this. But then the second part to that that I think is the, the, the real game changer for a lot of people is that it gives me access to some of my streaming services. So if I wanted to jump in here and hop on Netflix, I absolutely could uh, and then be able to watch a show if I want. Now, the way it's allowing me to do all this is because I'm using my phone as a hotspot to connect to this. So that's what's giving it its data. Now you could get a SIM card for this if you absolutely wanted to uh, and do the exact same things. But I just want you to understand that if you wanna take advantage of something like this, you absolutely can. You can come in here, you can jump into a show that you wanna watch, hit play and start watching the show. So if you're looking for a way to get a little bit more access and control over Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and you're just not getting it, this is a different way to do it. 
So if you're interested in this, uh, I've you know I've made a full review on this. If you want to check it out and understand some differences between this version and an older version, is what I was using prior to this. These guys sent me out one and asked. Uh, understand that I've got videos. I'll throw a link up in the description, and then in the description of this video, I'll also put links to go if you are interested in purchasing this. It's 155 after my discount code. It's 127. So what is that? Nine more dollars than what Honda's going to offer for simply wireless car playing a car. Uh, so to me, worth the money, and it gives you a lot of different options that you can take advantage of. All right. So this next feature is kind of a, a humorous one to me but it really is true have you ever been in the car and somebody turns it off and they're kind of getting their their items together right they're getting their purse their bag their their water bottle you know whatever those items are and you're in the back and you're trying to get out and you're like yanking on the door and you're like it, it's it's got me locked in right and there's not always a button that you can see there's just a window down button right so you're going let me out well that's because it's set up to where when the driver opens the door it then unlocks the remaining doors of the vehicle so everybody can get out well, you can change that. You have some different options. So we're gonna jump across here and go into vehicle settings. Now, when you're under vehicle settings, you're gonna to wanna to go into door and window. Now, under door and window, you wanna to go to auto door unlock, right? So currently it's set, when I open the driver's side door, it'll then unlock the remaining doors of the car. But you have some options here. You can change it to where when you shift to park, it'll automatically unlock all the doors of the car. So that way everybody can get out and kind of start doing whatever they need to do if they need to get bags out and whatever, right? Especially if you have kids. Or you can set it to where when you uh, turn the ignition off, it'll then unlock all the doors. Or you can completely turn this function off if you want. Now, when it comes of the tailgate, I want to talk to you about one or two things here. The first is I can either use the key fob to open it, right, if it comes with this, or I can press the button to close it, right? Either one will work. But sometimes I've gotten all my belongings out, my hands are full. And it can be kind of a pain because then I'm like, well, I still need to lock the doors, but I've now closed this and I have everything in my hands. There's actually a button on here. It's up underneath here. There's a little button that you can press. If you press it, it'll actually lock all the doors on the car. So if you didn't know, a lot of these are gonna come with power tailgates, but what you might need is if you have a low garage, you need to kind of keep it to a certain height and be able to set it to that height. So what you do is when you get it to the height that you want, if you press and hold, and then inside you'll hear a double beep, and now it's set to this height. So anytime it opens or closes, it'll be set to that height. If you ever need to adjust it, open it and just move it to where you want. So maybe you want it all the way up, press and hold the button, and then wait for the double beep, and now it's set to that height. Now, when it comes to the tailgate, occasionally you're gonna pull in somewhere that maybe isn't your garage. Maybe it's not your building or your structure or whatever, and you need to open this, but if you use the automatic opener, it might hit the roof, right? If you come up and you, underneath, you've got the button that you can touch, if you press and hold it and wait a second, it'll actually open and then it'll stop and allow you to manually open this up so you don't have to worry about hitting it on something wherever you're at. So let's talk about cargo space in this car. There's a couple tips and tricks that I wanna show you back here. So back here, the first thing I wanna show you is that one, you've got hidden space, right? That's kind of cool. You can keep things hidden where people can't see it. But on top of that, I've got carpet here right now. You can actually take this sucker out and flip it around and then use it with a plastic side up. So if you had something back here that was a little bit wet, you didn't want the carpet to get soaked, you could do that. And then additionally, you can actually drop this down into the bottom right? To where now you have a little bit deeper well, and you can use either side, the carpet or the plastic side. You ever run out of gas? I have. It's embarrassing. It's happened to me twice in my life, and the last time was about a year or two ago. But I want to talk about running out of gas, and then of course, changing a spare, right? These are kind of odd end things, but things you need to know. Well, there's a reason I'm at the back of the car. So if you come over here to the back, you're going to see this little cubby space right here, and there's these little locks that I can turn, and if I turn them, this piece will pop open. So first off, no, you got hidden storage in there. The second part that I want you to know is this is where the jack and the accessories live to get the spare. Now the spare in your car, if I move this out of the way, you're gonna see a piece here where you can drop the spare down much like you would on a pickup truck. And then you would get your jack and your accessories out to be able to change the wheel, right? But there's a second part to this. Back here, there's this little funnel. If I was to run out of gas, I need a way to hold this valve open because now it is valve, right? I don't have a cap anymore. So if I ran out of gas, I'm on the side of the road, I may not have a gas can on me. What this does is hold it open to where I could pour gas down into that in case I didn't have a gas can on me. So in case you ever need this, understand that's what this is for and where it lives. So this next super trick is going to be related to backing the vehicle up, right? So when I throw the vehicle in reverse, it can actually tilt the mirror down for me. Now you can pick which side it does it. Now how you do that is based off the mirror, right? So if I have it in the middle, it won't affect either one. If I move it to the right side, it'll drop that right mirror over there down. Or if I move it to the left side, it'll drop the left mirror down. All right guys, so if you're getting your car and you've previously the night before parked it and you put your parking brake on, so you hop into the car, you you know, you, you start it up, you go to hit the gas, you're like, why the hell am I not moving? And then you're like, oh, I'm that guy. It's happened to me plenty of times. I'm sure it's happened to you at least once. Well, Honda set something up that you could take advantage of uh, to where you don't have to worry about that, right? So I've got into my car, right? You can see that I've turned the car on, the car's in park, I've got my parking brake on, right? If I have my seatbelt on, right? I can hit the gas, or excuse me, hit the drive button, and then I can go ahead and touch the gas. It'll actually release that for me, so I can take off and go, and I don't look like a big dummy. Well, at least for that reason. 
All right guys, so this next separate trick is actually gonna be related to what's right in front of me, right? So when you're looking on here, you can of course see the tachometer. And when you're driving down the road, you're gonna see this like light that lights up and turns green and fades out. And what that is, is that's the fuel efficiency backlight. Understand that you can turn a lot of these things off if you really wanna clean up what's back here. So to do so, I'll show you exactly how to do it. So we're gonna come over here to the touchscreen. Now, when we're over here, we wanna to go to vehicle settings. Now, under vehicle settings, we're gonna to go to one of meter setup. Now, under meter setup, you can scroll down here. First is fuel efficiency backlight. If you wanna turn off that light, simply touch that, that'll turn it off, right? Cool, we turned one off. I can then come out and I can go to the tachometer. I can then turn that off as well, right? So this way, when I come back over to this screen right here, you'll see it's a much cleaner look and I don't have to worry about that green light that turns on and flashes and does different things. So I can try to, you know, simplify what I'm seeing over here. All right guys, so that was a handful of tips and tricks on the 2024 Honda Pilot. Most of these will work on the 2023 as well because they are very similar. If you don't know much about that, you can always check out my reviews. I've reviewed the EXL 2024 and the LX so far. Uh, and I compare them to not only the 2023s, but also some other makes and models out there in the world. So if you're saying, hey man, I'm thinking about buying one of these, uh, you were just checking out this video and then you want to see how this stacks up to maybe an Ascent or a Toyota Highlander, right? Or some of the other vehicles that are out there in the world. I've made some videos. You'll see them at the end of this video. Uh, but I want to ask you for a couple of favors. One, I hope you press the like button because you like what I'm doing and you like the way I present the content and I keep things moving. This is not a long video with a drawn out slow talker, right? Second part to that is I hope you leave a comment. If you like the way I'm doing something, hey, let me know. If there's something you feel like I missed or something you don't like I'm doing, leave a comment and let me know. I always appreciate any feedback that you have. Uh, third, I hope that you'll subscribe to the channel so that when I produce videos like this, you will receive them. And last, I hope you'll share the video. Hey, if you got some friends who are, that own a pilot or are thinking about buying one, they might want to know some of the cool stuff that it can do. I hope that you'll shoot this over to them uh, and allow them to see it. Other than that, I hope you'll like, comment, subscribe, all the things. Later, guys!